Hey guys, Infidel 1258 here. I am joined by Jim Morgan, Jim the Captain Morgan, and Tails. Uh, Tails from the Cryptmancer, and we're going to hang out. We're going to spend some time talking about all things Splinterlands tonight. Got a ton of things to talk about, uh, but we definitely want to get into the rank rewards. We want to get into, man, there's so many things. It's, you know, the rank rewards, the new payouts, bronze is paying heavily. Champion is rewarding in an exciting way too. Uh, I don't think it's commensurate for what people have put into it, but it's exciting. Um, I've seen 12,000, I've seen tens of thousands of dollars for DEC or tens of thousands of DEC being paid out in one loot chest. And uh, there's, and then there's, there's the, the, the data on the, the reward cards and how I was watching that video tales and how, as we were talking about before we started recording some of that, those cards are just flying off the shelves. And, um, like you were just saying a moment ago, uh, it's, we haven't seen them. We haven't even begun to see anything yet because of how that's going to transform once the old reward cards disappear. And also when more players even come online, Hey, there's going to be just, it's just going to be, they're going to disappear. Don't you think? Tails, introduce yourself and comment on that question if you could. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Dwayne. Thanks for having me on here tonight. Uh, Tales from the Cryptmancer on YouTube and on Twitch. And yeah, happy to discuss these topics. We just uh, published a video earlier this afternoon talking about a lot of this content because, well, it's pretty relevant, I think, to the community right now. And, you know, specifically as it pertains to the reward cards, what we saw is roughly speaking before the new rank rewards came online we had about 50 percent of the commons that we had gone through on the old chaos legion reward cards and we're over 58 percent now and that's just through half a season here of the new rank rewards season so we're flying through those so i guess the takeaway there is you know if you're expecting like your genoshanuses to be in print i mean granted genoshanus is still as a legendary i think it's uh, still below 50 percent but it's the days of Jin O'Shaughness being in print are numbered here. Mm. So we have to be aware of that. And what happens here is we see that even the new Chaos Legion reward cards, like the Vampire Bat there at the bottom of your screen, is at 1.25% printed just in half a season here under the new rank reward system. And, you know, that looks like, you know, maybe it's on target or on pace as the previous reward cards, but like we were previously discussing, that is really deceptive because what's going to happen here as soon as the Pelicor Bandits and the Pelicor Conjurers and others are out of print here pretty quickly, obviously that doubles because there's no other commons to give out at that point in time. So that rate doubles. And if we go to the daily active users on Peak Monsters dashboard, they will also notice that, uh, you know, we're missing 200,000 bots right now in the game. So as soon as those 66% of the other player base come online, obviously the rewards start flying off the shelves even faster. So in reality, what you see here is that these reward cards are going to go quick, mm -hmm. not only the existing ones, but the new ones. And it's kind of part of this whole stimulation of the rewards economy that has been introduced. And I think possibly one of the more important points to discuss is um, the rewards and, and, and who is seeing the rewards, how that could uh, affect the ecosystem because you know, we're seeing a lot of silver and bronze chests being pulled and, you know, th minimum 33% reward cards being dropped in those. So if you're like yourself or myself, we're playing more alts than we're playing our, our main decks just to grab these reward cards. Because in reality, for the most part, uh, you get more reward cards playing at bronze or silver than you do playing up in the league. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I 100% I agree. And I've been talking about this issue like pretty well nonstop since the beginning of the season. And I've noticed something interesting. And then, Jim, I want to hear what you've been feeling in the in the week since we started this new season. But I've been noticing there was like a lot of reluctance to um, some of my content. People would leave comments that were like saying things around, you know, Dwayne, you it was it was kind of pointed toward um maybe implying that I was just feeling frustrated about my diamond level rewards. And, and as if, as if my criticisms of the new reward system could be, could be isolated to um, the sense that or just boiled down to the sense that, um, that there were, you know, I'm not getting enough for what I put in. And I think that is part of it. In one sense, that's part of it. It's like, 
if I put $70,000 into a game and that's what my main account is worth, then I should, I feel I should get substantially more rewards than somebody who puts $10 into the game. I think that's both fair and logical, but that's not me kind of, I don't say that to just, you know, gr grumbling and complain. I'm, I'm really satisfied with what I'm getting in this game. Um, but that th there's a tension that I've been receiving around that. And it's kind of almost important to raise in this conversation because it, to me, it actually, I was talking to somebody today, it points to, I think it points to, um, there is, there is obviously this amazing, the, like in this, this is a secondary account. It was started at novice this season. I'm in gold three. Now I, I earned 20, 25 loot chests today playing three games, like literally having three wins. I earned 25 loot chests. They're all bronze, but three wins did that for me. And, and, um, and my point is, um, there's a ton of people right now that are getting, that are going to get hundreds of loot chests this season, which is so amazing. And I'm happy for them and I'm doing it too. So I'm happy for myself, but I think there's an interesting, um, energy and excitement about that. That isn't necessarily recognizing what I think me and you were pointing to tales around what that will do to, for instance, those reward cards being burnt, like just, just disappearing and the inflation that that will result in there's all kinds of ramifications the the incentive towards uh, you know attracting more and more bot armies and then the win trading that i've seen you cover so well um i'd love to hear some thoughts from you tails but i want to throw to jim and jim what have you been feeling this season have you seen any of the content i've been putting out jim around the the bronze stuff and uh yeah. and, and even what's your experience this season yeah so uh one thing i, I definitely want to talk about like you were saying, the people in the higher leagues, um, you know, they put a lot more money into it. And sure, they get, you know, in theory, um, more rewards. But when we're talking about an ROI, so the return on investment, it's kind of nowhere close. What, like you were just saying, like, um, you know, you, you made a brand new account. You, you farm or you got, you rented out a Yodin and you farmed up like, all the money in a single day, essentially, mm. from from what these chests were. Mm. And, um, you know, a lot of people have talked in the past of like, oh, the rich get richer. And it's not just in this game, but like also other things in, in life. But, you know, it's it's at a point right now to where it's like you can put in so little money and you're getting a far better investment than you would be putting in more money. Mm -hmm. You know in terms of percentages yeah yeah and I think it's like you know you spend you we talked about this you spend ten dollars on an account you get three dollars in credits you go rent out a yodin you go rent out some other cards maybe you get a lamacron maybe you get alric uh oceanus whatever else and it's not that much it's not going to be three dollars for the entire day um you know it's it's what like 20 what like 25 cents or something for yodin if that yeah and uh and then you're just gonna farm up like 30 chests however many chests there, and uh <laughs> it's ridiculous there's so much to talk about on this and i but i i almost want to because i've been watching your stuff tales and uh you did that video which got me down this rabbit hole on the bronze level rewards you did the you did the video talking about how you got 70 some chests in two hours and, and that sparked a recognition that like for, cause you did that talk, talk to me about, and Jim about how much that cost you. Uh, cause I'm pretty mm -hmm. confident. The answer is nothing. Is that, is that true? Like tell, tell us what, how that worked for you and, uh, what were the costs that you had to put out to receive 70, whatever chests and have you continued to play that? And are you still seeing that sort of success? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it cost me, I think 10 cents in rentals to get that amount of chests and which is nothing. I mean, it's it's no, literally no. nothing. And, you know, I've been trying to repeat it as much as possible. Like I have four alts that I just had before just for testing purposes, for testing bronze and silver for content and stuff. And I hadn't used them for months, like probably four months or so, maybe even longer. And now, you know, I, I honestly have, have uh, had to stop playing them because I don't have enough time in the day to play them because you know, they keep spinning up earth or water or fire quests, which are perfect for, you know, getting all these mm -hmm. chests. But, 
you know, I'd love to spend, you know, an hour playing each one of them and getting all these chests. I just don't have enough time in the day. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Bots, bots do. And this mm -hmm. is perfect for bots. So I think when we look at, you know, if the intent for this new system was to encourage players and bots to climb higher and, and combine their accounts and and uh, play in, you know, instead of silver and bronze, play in gold and diamond or champion, it's, it's not the... The effect is not going to be, I think, what the dev team had envisioned or wanted. Because what's going to happen as soon as the bots can um, come online and be optimized, they're going to do what you and I are doing. Mm -hmm. And that is spamming these bronze and silver accounts and getting lucrative rewards. Because the rewards that you're getting in bronze, for example, like I just went on to Splinter Share. To look at my rewards chest i just opened i just opened 16 bronze chests in splinter share and i received 48 cents in those uh, chest rewards in dec and cards mm -hmm. and in fact if i count the number of cards i received it's two four six eight i received 10 cards in the 16 chests yeah with a couple of those being rares uh, actually multiple of those being rares uh so 48 cents is what i got out of the chest today uh, i i rented again probably six cents i think it was less than 60 dec because it was an earth splinter or daily focus today so i got basically 42 cents in profit today just from that account and on my champion accounts i got 24 cents pulling two chests yeah and i'm playing champion at the diamond one level right now so i understand i'm not at champion yet because the competition is so tough and we can talk about that as well Dwayne. because yeah. i don't know about you but the competition at the highest levels is hard yes it's, it's not easy and at the bronze silver level it's like i'm i'm in the gold level as even well, at low gold it's easy perspective it's just automatic like yeah. i'm 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 scrolling through facebook you know i'm doing whatever i don't even pay attention i just spam stuff and look, i win look at this screen and, like uh, it's just green green yeah i had a three like but it Look at this green. It's just green. Like these are all just wins, and I'm I'm on autopilot. Like we're talking, and it's with three wins in a row, four wins in a row, and um. It, but then this is gold level three, and I don't have a gold deck. Most of these are like one BCX or two BCX, like they're low level cards. But I'm using you know among I'm I'm choosing a meta type uh, summoner and a you know a meta build, and it's toward the end of the season, so I'm able to compete against people who. You know they're not the creme de la creme of gold they're kind of themselves are just struggling to kind of succeed and and so i can get i can win 15 out of 20 or 17 out of 20 and that allows the win streaks and that's why that's why it's like not just the, the you need less investment to succeed at bronze like significantly less and that is strange because they've said that they don't want to incentivize bots to have a, a unique advantage right they said they want to call us deeper they said they want to consolidate assets they've said they want to incentivize um higher level play and i think they have definitely they have like hear me guys they definitely have the diamond rewards are not just better they're amazing but but the 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 interesting thing is that I don't believe they've grown so much that they are that their growth is in keeping with what we're talking about over here. I actually believe if I do this again next season and if they don't nerf the bronze rewards, I will be able to get around 300 to 400 bronze chests by playing a full season on a new account. And what I'll do is next season I'll create two new accounts and I'll move all the assets from 1258 scholar 6 and 1258 scholar 7 or maybe I won't even. Maybe I'll just I'll donate new assets from my existing main account because I could do, I have that much collection power I could do that and I'll just I'll alternate them like a farmer does his land like you know this season we're doing corn next season we let the land rest then we do corn then we let the land rest and 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 I'll do that so that this account 1258 uh, 1258 scholar six can can fall down from gold all the way back to bronze by the time I'm ready to use it again and thereby access these really really easy to obtain bronze level chests. Because the thing is, it's not that I love bronze level chests. They are okay, though. They are. It's really important to say that, guys. Thirty-three percent, thirty-three percent chance of dropping a card is very respectable. Considering, remember, it used to be 10 percent chance at a card. So that's great. And you guys know my thesis on this. These cards are not worth. They're worth far more than the price uh, currently implies. And as we were talking about a few minutes ago, the, the fact that they're flying off the shelves is going to mean that, that their price appreciates even probably sooner than I might have 
initially anticipated. Um, so man, I'm super, I love this reward system. I think it's amazing. I think there's a big problem though with how much rewards, I don't know how to fix it though. Cause one way you could nerf, on the one hand I almost, and maybe Jim, I'll ask you and then Tails, I've got two suggestions. I don't know if either of them work, but you, we could nerf the bronze rewards like they have in the past. And then, and then that would, that would maybe quote unquote fix the issue because you, I'm worrying about bots rushing back. I'm worrying about automation, just stealing up the, the assets. Um, I'm worried about, but then again, isn't that a double-edged sword? And this is where Jim, I'll throw to you. If we nerf bronze rewards, aren't we then saying to all the new players, guys, we don't really, we don't really care about you. We're more concerned about the bot armies. And maybe that's a trade-off that makes sense to do. But I'm, I do see it as a trade-off. I think if we nerf bronze, we're gonna, we're gonna punish new players. And yes, we will slow down or discourage bots. Maybe that's worth it. I don't know, Jim. What do you think about that? Is and then and then tails after after that. Yeah. So I mean, like you're saying, it's a double-edged sword. Um, it's obviously it's really nice for uh, for low-level players, low investment players to be getting decent rewards. But when we talk about like what um, Sinister just said of um, brand new account he goes and rents his cards for 10 cents and he's making like 46 cents from whatever uh you know his his yeah. uh chest opening yeah and it's like you i don't think people realize like that's what and you're saying 45 so 300 and like 50 percent roi in a in a day in a few hours whatever yeah. the time frame was Two like hours, that's ridiculous yeah times like of, tens of thousands for bots that are come online and mm -hmm. use it so you know i think what's interesting again is no so to be clear and to reiterate your point Dwayne, and also jim is that you know the rewards at all levels of the game are great right now whether you're mm -hmm. playing champion diamond gold whatever it's great it's more than ever before fantastic yeah. right i think what we're saying here as you know, I think we're all very bullish on Splinterlands and want the game to succeed. And I think what we're saying here is, hey, this is not the intended behavior. Things are probably going to go sideways here pretty quickly. And we probably want to get ahead of that. Now, I understand they want to see the data and they don't want to react, um, you know, have a knee-jerk reaction here. And there's definitely generating excitement in the game right mm -hmm. now because of these rewards. Yeah. But it's kind of like you don't want to have a bait and switch where a new person comes into the game and sees these great rewards and gets them for, you know, a week or two weeks. And then all of a sudden, you know, that gets pulled out from under them and now they're getting something different. You want the experience to be consistent. Yeah. And, you know, I did propose in my video uh, a, a solution, which I think we can talk about later in tonight, is a way to still reward the, the players that are both new and old but reward them commensurate with, you know, how they've built their collections and, and what they're doing in the game and, and also discourage the automation of bots. Mm -hmm. And I think that's ultimately what the goal is for everyone. You know, unless you're a, a bot farm owner who owns tens of thousands of bots, you probably want the game to be long-term sustainable and you want to earn rewards, but you want to earn it in a reasonable fashion. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, again, encouraging you to accumulate assets and to climb up the leaderboard and become more competitive. Mm -hmm. There was a comment in the chat from Dom Ever, and he said, um, um, first of all, he said, so far I have around a thousand chests between my accounts pending for end of season, all using cards I own and delegate to my alts. They really need to nerf bronze and silver. I think this is probably the only real way. I was kind of on the fence a moment ago when I posed the question, like maybe that's a, I could see some potential downs, down, downside effects, but I can't really imagine any other way. Like I, I think just don't, I mean, it, this doesn't seem sustainable in a sense of, this is such a dramatic departure from where we were, where bronze got one loot chest per day and five at the end of the season and 10% of them had a card in it. This is so drastically different and as you pointed out and as i've seen and i saw other uh, other creators comment on this you can you can run this system for free 
Um, like literally the DC, the credits they give you and then the DC you earn by playing are going to be enough to, to, to continue that, that ball rolling for you. And so I just don't see this as sustainable. So something does need to change. And he, he mentioned maybe a solution is to weight card own owned cards more heavily within the R shares calculation. That, that sounds like something interesting to me, but I, I don't know. Does the system even recognize when you rent a card, does it think you quote unquote own it? I actually don't know the answer to this. Um, so kind of, it gives you the um, collection power that you need to s level up, but it doesn't do anything for like uh, your airdrop. Yeah. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. So then it does distinguish that you yeah. don't own the car. That's important. So you could, we could technically do something like that where we, where we almost, and maybe that would then create more incentive to, because the issue isn't necessarily that there's high, hmm, it isn't necessarily that there's huge rewards at bronze. It's more like there's huge rewards at bronze with zero cost. Like, I mean, yes, you spend $10 to get an account, but we've just demonstrated that you can literally do it. Like once you, once you pay the 10 bucks, you, it bankrolls itself. And so that's the problem. It's like, you don't ever have to go deeper into it. It's not like you even have to buy cards. Like I'm going to earn, I didn't show you this yet guys, but I did this. This is one of my bronze rewards from today. This is a bronze reward you're looking at. One, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20. I had 22 loot chests in this payout. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven cards. Half of them are cards. And I had an epic and I guess no rares. But this is this is ridiculous. And then somebody put commented on this one. I could send I could sell the Jin Chwala and then you know use that asset to fund the system if I was so inclined. But you know, to me, these assets are worth way more than 10 cents or five cents or one cent. So I'm going to just hold them, but bot armies are just going to liquidate. And that, so that's the unhealthy thing. It's like these rewards are radically different and maybe that's a problem in and of itself or because of the, you know, the, we're going to burn through these, the cards and maybe that's too much inflation and lots of other questions. But I think the bigger issue is, is that they, it's being achieved and earned for n almost no investment. And that is not that's never going to incentivize new players or bot armies to really go deeper into the economy they're going to do they're going to just be skimming the surface as i've seen you so often comment uh tales in your videos it's like they aren't here supporting the network they're here just leeching off of it is is, is that how you feel about it and or am i misrepresenting your your take on that I think that's fair. I mean, can you also, Dwayne, can you um, pull, go back to Twitter and pull up the tweet I just posted? Yeah. That shows kind of an illustration. You can this search one? for like Mansur Tales, I think. Okay. Um, on Twitter yep. here. Uh, hang on. This and one? that's what we were just talking about. Yep. That's just, I just created this as we we're talking uh, on stream. So hang on. One account is worth oh. six cents. The other, the other is worth thousands. Yeah. Can you... <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yes, which... <laughs> so this is your big boy chest this is your big boy oh. um reward but i mean i mean yeah like even even this like 80s and here's the thing you um i've heard lots of people i, I saw i saw gank and keys walking keys talk about how much each of the loot chests is worth i also saw um luke do a great covering of this and the the, the value of each chest um because on the this is worth talking about because on the one hand people are going to say look the the chest rewards at bronze are so trivial they're the, on average it's three cents according to what i i've seen from gank and, and separately from luke um and then the the rewards at champion diamond are going to be closer to 50 cents i've heard um and that matt probably is true on an average basis oh i lost that one wow um on an average basis that's going to be true but averages are true over bigger numbers not in a if you have um if you take a sample size to try and draw extrapolate data from a population and you've got a sample size of 10 or five like you actually or three in that example of the loot chests you had three loot chests and 
it was possible that they would be like gold legendary, gold legendary, 20,000 DC. Like that was possible. Um, and it's not possible for that to be here. But this is, it, it's such a small sample size. Mathematically speaking, this is not out of the ordinary. And, and simultaneously, this is like a, with bronze, you're going to get a bigger population of, of loot chests. And therefore you can be more reliably count on that three cent value. And sometimes you're going to get lucky with like 80 earlier today. I got 290 DC in one chest at bronze. And, um, and so it's very unsatisfying if you get three chests and you get one alchemy potion and like 200 DC, which is, is that? Yeah, it's a, it's a law of averages. Yeah. So if you look at that, the, the, the chest that rented for six cents, there were 16 chests and it rewarded 48 cents of value. So it's exactly three cents per chest on average, right? Yeah. So that's, that's what we saw there. And what we saw as, as an individual, like as a player, what would I rather have right now? Well, I'd rather have the cards because I can play with the cards. And that's, I'm getting lots of cards because I'm getting a 33% drop rate and I'm getting a lot of chess. Yep. So that's good. And that's why a lot of people are dropping down to bronze and silver to play right now because that's the only way they can get reward cards if they're playing at the higher levels right now because that's how, that's how you get them. <laughs> you, you pull lots of chess and pull lots of cards. Um, but to be clear, I think what we're going to see at end of season the champion and diamond players are going to be very, very happy because all of a sudden now they're going to pull, you know, 30 or 50 or 60 chests at end of season in a week. And everyone's going to be lighting up uh, Twitter and YouTube, et cetera, with crazy end of season champion openings, which is great because you're going to see more chests being opened mm -hmm. and you're going to get more of that yep. um, return to average value at that point in time. True. But I think it goes back again to the, the question is, yes, everyone's seeing more value. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Whatever level you play at, you're happy, right? It's just really more about, you know, is it driving the right behavior? Because again, what we're seeing is, you know, everyone's flocking to, you know, bring up their alts and spin up their alts because the bots aren't here in the economy. They're not pushing up rental prices just yet, which will happen sooner than later, right? The rental market's gonna go crazy. I am mm. pretty much predicting that. And, you know, my, my comment in the video earlier today that we dropped was really to say, you know, if we want to encourage, um, you know, ownership in the game, investment in the game, and a sense of, you know, kind of pride in your collection, we shouldn't focus the rewards on a very uh, focused and thin uh, kind of exploit, you know, which is basically whether you're a bot or whether you're yourself or myself, just going in and renting 15,000 focus power, like I rent a Val in the Moor and I rent you know, a Kraken and I call it a day and just spam for the next hour, yeah. or whether I rent a Yoden and a couple two mana archers and do the same thing. You know, it, it shouldn't be about just having a very thin, temporary focused hit and run tactic. Like if you play poker, right? What is the most annoying thing in poker besides maybe the bad beat stories? Well, it's the hit and runners. Those that come into a cash game, you know, get lucky on a coin flip and then leave the table with two or three times the money they started with and go brag to their friends how great of a poker player they are. Because as a player, you're like, what the heck just happened, right? So yeah. what's happening is whether it's you or me or it's the bots, right now you can exploit the system and just have a very focused and thin way to rent for 24 hours, gain rewards, and off you go. And that's not sustainable long-term in my mind for mm. growth. And what is, is the, for example, the ability for the dev team to change the daily focus to, for example, a battle focus, where after every chest you earn, it resets and re-rolls basically the chest. So for example, if on your splinter right now, you have a focus for a dragon, it looks like, right? Yeah, yep. Dwayne, once you achieve that dragon chest and you, uh, get it and you gain it what if the game re-rolled it and now you have a life chest for your next chest for your next battle focus for the day what that allows mm. you to do is avoids the splinter spam that we're seeing now yep. and, and rewards collections or players that have a wide collection a diverse collection that can you know not only play multiple splinters and multiple use multiple tactics and use multiple cards but it encourages multiple it encourages large collections and and, and, and big collections and again, it's all relevant to the level. Like if I'm at silver, you know, having uh, silver level cards across all of silver is 
you know, one thing, and it's definitely something that a silver player should aspire to, and then slowly build up from silver into gold, etc. You know, mm. go from bronze into silver. So this encourages the right behavior in the community, and that is acquiring cards. And if you don't have the right cards, selling cards you have extras of, and getting the uh, cards that you need. So it's, it promotes playing the game and, and building your deck, just like if you play Magic: The Gathering, you might do the same thing over time. Yeah. So in that regard. It rewards you to get more rewards by having a bigger collection, a wider collection. And it also stops the exploit that we see now, which is essentially, hey, I'm just going to rent, you know, 15,000 power for fire, water or earth mm. and spam it and then wait 24 hours and do it all over again. Yeah. So in my mind, I think that could be an option. There are also other options. If you check the comments in my, my YouTube video that also are viable. But I think something should be done here in the coming seasons to to address this for sure yeah yeah that's interesting um i hadn't i've never heard that the idea of changing the focus they um that seems like an easy thing i imagine it would require some sort of coding because they they almost it, like i think they turn on a meter and then when you press if when you switch the focus like if you switch your daily if i win a few battles at dragon and i press switch focus it, it just resets the meter so i almost think they're the code is probably written in such a way that it's like if it if it gets changed it gets reset but that sounds like a relatively easy thing to i probably correct i heard um i, I was talking with somebody this morning um and we were kicking around some ideas about what what might work and i was thinking um that one suggestion might just be to for the because now we're almost talking not so much about the fact that there's too many rewards we're almost complaining about the focus and i think it's a great let's talk about that now let's talk about is the focus is a is in my opinion there's two gigantic problems with the new rank rewards and the first we spent a half an hour talking about was the you know the monetization and the the cost uh the roi available for for, for a ten dollar new account versus you know the roi available for tens of thousands of dollars in your account now the focus is the second biggest problem with this because and they've admitted it they've they've said repeatedly we understand we shouldn't have done you know just splinters and we we really didn't want to but you know we wanted to get the rank reward changes out and so now we're gonna update it as soon as we can and soon it won't take long and 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 i did a video on this it was called like you know um focus changes are coming or something like that and um and Yabo have seemed like frustrated by the question because obviously he it's it's been constantly being brought up probably and so it's going to come we're going to get changes but the um one suggestion i i, I was kicking around with somebody today was well what if one easy thing is just add more focuses and another potentially easy thing is what if there was two concurrent focuses you know you and you know maybe it's dragon and maybe it's maybe it's you know snipe there there could be a lot of opportunity for like interesting creativity in that um in that you could just you you could play one and the other and and sometimes snipe is going to allow you to play five different teams anyways um i don't know what you guys think about that jim do you have any suggestions on the focus or are you are you having a hard time you know i guess earning your dailies through the focus or has it been good for you well, uh, I haven't really gotten to play recently mm -hmm. <laughs> for uh, reasons, and um, but I did actually have an idea for it. So a lot of other games do this to where it's like every day they'll give you like daily missions to do. It'll be like deal 500 damage with, with X thing or play a certain support role or like play a character in a, in, you know whatever specific game like that. Um, but you have like three to five different daily missions you can do. Um, and say they did something along those lines. So it's like once you complete one of those missions, um, then like then you get a chest rather than it being a purely focused thing of, you know, go out, rent 15,000 power, yeah. destroy someone for that day and max out your your loot boxes. Yeah, yeah like Call of Duty where... If yeah. you if you get a snipe kill from like a million miles away, that's a loot chest. If you if you knife somebody, yeah. that's a loot chest. If you, you know, yeah. however they wanted to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be interesting. So I mean, there's it feels like, and who are we? I mean, we're just three dudes putting our heads together. I feel like we just those are three decent ideas that probably merit some deeper consideration. And and this is deeply problematic. Like this so here's the thing like dragon is almost like a windfall because when you get dragon you can play any splinter and still win 
But when you compare that to running like a have to do water splinter, I mean, that's that's handcuffing you. And I would argue, especially, and we, we you made this point earlier, Tails, um, at the highest levels, there's a unique challenge of, of uh, to the game where it is not copy and paste, copy and paste, you know, rinse, repeat to, to, to win. It has to be deeply analytical. There's like a counter uh, play thing happening. You need to have the right cards. You need to get the right splinters. You need to be able to read your enemy, react and so on. Um, that is not at all the case at the lowest levels, but it definitely is at the highest levels. And so I just feel um, when when you tell me I have to pick, essentially you, you handcuff me to a specific splinter, you've really hampered my ability to be creative. Um, and so, yeah, man, I think I think that's the that's the second biggest problem. But I feel like the focus is an easier problem in that maybe it's as simple as adding new focuses. Yeah, and just to, to that point, Dwayne, I think what's interesting, it's all nuanced, right? So Dragon for an account like your main or one you're delegating to is yeah. easy to deal with, especially at higher levels, because it, it's, it's like you said, you can use different summoners, you can use any splinter that you have cards with, but at the silver or bronze level when you're spamming, if you're a bot or even if you're just a, a renter, it's not as good because now you never know what splinter you're going to get with the Dragon um card to, to team up with it so you either go all dragons and neutral cards for rentals on that uh focus yep. or you kind of have to have a good mix of cards already on the account so just so keep that in mind because that that it does vary based on uh you know what kind of account you're coming or playing with but uh, i think there's also one other suggestion and, and also just you know to be uh transparent here i think is what what we're talking about is we're not just here on your stream today complaining or you know moaning and griping about the status quo you know we're obviously concerned about it and want to offer solutions and possible options yes. you know, for the community to, to vet and talk about and, and you know ultimately get back to the development team as you know possibly things to consider because i think we all want the best for this game yep. and, and that's i think important it's, it's one thing just to complain to complain about stuff but it's also you know, if you if you really want to see improvement, how else to do that than to you know thoughtfully put together ideas that could help the situation? Totally. And I think there was another idea that I think I see Flo had mentioned, and that was um, you know just changing the the mix of the rewards right now to maybe lower the card drop rate for the lower levels and increase the DEC drop rate. Because then you have maybe, and we do the reverse for the upper levels, because then maybe you have, uh, you know, newer players that don't have cards getting DEC to buy cards and add to their collection. And maybe you have, um, you know, more larger decks having, getting more cards and then being able to maybe sell those back to the, the community, perhaps. That's also, you know, an option that is, is certainly has some some interesting merits yeah. to it as well. There's, I think, a lot of great ideas out in the community so far in just the, the, the few days that the system have been released. And, you know, we'll have to see what happens. And I know Matt has said that he doesn't want to make, you know, uh, irrational changes right away. He wants to kind of see what happens and look at the data and then go from there, which makes sense for sure. But uh, I think now is a great time for us as a community to come together and you know kind of propose some of those solutions and, mm -hmm. and have them ready to go for when they want to make a change. I totally agree, and I I love that you brought it back to the fact that like there's this is like this is coming from a place of we love the game and we actually we think that this is problematic in terms of like the long term sustainability and continued growth. One of the amazing things about this blockchain game is that unlike some of the other projects that, that are out, out there. We, this game has never strived to provide the short-term gains. It's always just been fun and rewarding. And over a long enough time horizon, you'll see significant opportunity, financial opportunity with this thing. But it's never tried to sell itself as, um, uh, you know, some, like, I don't want to name other names, but there are certain games out there that definitely their thing is, has always been, you can really win a lot here you know just stick around for like a short time you can roi your money in like a short time that's never really been what what this game has offered and and so i think and i'm worried that that's what this kind of feels like and that 
but I, but I'm, but I'm both worried and not worried because on the one hand, I think it's, it's problematic, but on the other hand, I feel confident that both Yagi and Yaba are going to see this issue and they're going to move, but they, but they're doing what probably I would do, which is look, it's, it was, and they said this in the last town hall is one of somebody raised a good question. It was like, they said, why don't you let us, uh, if I want to be in, if I'm in gold, and I want, let me compete for gold loot chests. Don't let me say that. Let me like click on, I'm, I want gold loot chests as opposed to, oh, last season I was in diamond and now I'm going to get diamond loot chests or, or I'm in silver. And, and you know what I mean? Like if you just were able to allocate, decide which one you wanted. Um, I, and I think even the next, another step better would be if you're in gold, you get gold chests. And if you're in silver, you get silver chests. And that would probably be more ideal because it would, it just would take away some of the, some of the but it's but it's a work in progress is my point and and we are i i'm confident that they're going to continue iterating and evolving and and i think it's going to be and it's going to be better than it ever was because it already is it's just man if those three hundred thousand bots come back and they have access to this holy cow the card prices will fall well hang on Card prices will fall in one sense because there'll be a huge supply boom uh, of sales because all the bots will sell their cards. But then there'd be a demand increase on rental because they they're populating their decks with rentals. I yeah, don't... you would you would see an increase in rental prices as well as meta card prices if are from a market sale perspective. But from the reward card perspective, you would more than likely see a decline in reward current print reward cards on the market just because there'd be a flood of supply there. And you, you can't really necessarily run, um, you know, a spam of the current reward cards as an example. Yeah. Um, hey, I want to spend a few minutes. It's already we've been talking for almost 90, 45 minutes. It's been great. Um, but I want to talk about uh, I had a note here. Oh yeah, somebody asked in the question, how long till they nerf these rewards? And I think we need to spend at least 10 minutes on this because I feel confident. Like I cover this game every day and I have for years now. It's been a full year of, of doing this every day, twice a day, sometimes more. Um, and lately it's been bronze, 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 because this is really, really significant. Um, these bronze chests are game changing. This new rank reward opportunity is really unique. And it's an open door that I want you guys to move through. Whoever's watching this and hearing this voice, I want you to take the advantage of it because it's it, it, there's hundreds of loot chests that you can have access to for really little uh, dollar investment. And that's going to be potentially life-changing over a long time horizon because it's going to start to build your deck and allow you to gain rewards with your time and tension in Splinterlands. But I don't believe that this opportunity is going to exist in a few weeks. I'm, I don't know. Is it going to be days, weeks, months before this Aggie and Yaba get to a place where they, they recognize that this is a problem? Um, Jim, I haven't heard from you in a while. What do you think? Like, do you think that the, how long till they react and how long till they change something? Um, uh, is it going to be days, weeks, months before they, they alter this? Do you think? Uh, I think they're going to say something about it on Monday at the next town hall. And, uh, well, oh, I'd say if not this season, probably by the end of the next season, they're going to try and figure something out. Yeah, that's, that's crime. T Tails, what do you think? Uh, I'm probably a little bit more conservative there. I think they'll address it before the end of the SPS airdrop. So I would say within four to eight weeks. Mm. So um, I think that's really important though, because when I, I'm covering this all the time and I'm thinking every time I do, I'm thinking who's watching this in like a month and saying to themselves, Oh, I got to get, I can get involved for 10 bucks and, and have a real opportunity. I hope nobody, but I suspect somebody, um, oh, hang on a second. I got to do, Oh, that's why. Uh, not going to work. Sorry guys. Hang on. Boom. Boom. Um, yeah, um, yeah, man, this, someone's going to be watching this video and uh, in, in, in uh, two weeks and three weeks in a month and think to themselves, oh, I can like these bronze level rewards. And I suspect this, this window is going to begin to close. I don't know. I'm kind of leaning more towards what Jim's saying. I think 
next week they'll be they'll actually have conversations around it that doesn't mean they'll necessarily change something um but i do think that uh, on the one hand i think you can't help but miss this but i also think Part of me says they can't help but miss this and they will see it this week and start to move that ball. But then another part of me says there's a large community of people that are really happy with what this is. And so when I think Eggie was saying in the last town hall, he said, nothing's on fire. And I almost think he said that because he is in an, he's hearing a community who are really satisfied by the fact that they're they're getting 70 chests in bronze like this is this is crazy and i mean they're satisfied because they're not putting money into it yeah they're just getting value yeah and so no of course no, no one's complaining and therefore there's no fire because no one's complaining about a fire do you know what i mean you think yeah. that's true tails or, yeah. or am i missing something yeah, i mean if, if you if your bank opened up at stores and said here's a sack of money take one no one's going to say anything. There's going to be a line out the doors. Everyone's going to say, yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. This is a great deal. I, I get to rob a bank without robbing a bank. So yeah, great. Yeah. So, but again, um, the, the rental markets are down because, you know, for various reasons, like the bots haven't come online. I think the whole equation changes once the engine restarts, once the, the bots come back to the game and get those extra 200,000 daily active users back using the game. The rental prices will climb, the card values will climb for meta cards, and it's gonna be like a golden age from, from a market perspective, more than likely. Take away some of the, the supply issues on the reward card specifically. So for the near term, yeah, you're gonna hear lots of great things. And it's kind of like what I mentioned in my video with the analogy is with the COVID pandemic, when government started giving people money for staying at home and sitting on the couch, yeah, everyone loved that, right? But now, you know, two years later, we're starting to feel the implications of those decisions, uh, not only in the workforce, but also in the inflation rates and some of the other supply issues and other things that are kind of related to that whole that topic. So, yeah, so, I mean, every action or decision has a, you know, a reaction or a uh, repercussion, right? So we'll see changes in the game as a result of this. It won't you know, we won't see them overnight. It'll take some time to work its way through the macro economy and the ecosystem, but we'll definitely see it. And so while things may be good today, you know, they may not be necessarily great, you know, a month or three months down the line, we'll have to see. But that's why I know the team has, in, you know, working on investing in analytics and putting a lot of people uh, full-time on this kind of stuff. So again, we have to kind of have faith that you know, now that the engine is restarting and they're starting to get data points in, hopefully they'll make the right adjustments and you know everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't want to, you know, make, make it sound like we're, you know, being alarmist and saying the sky is falling. No, it's not what we're saying. We're saying is things are good. People are making, uh, you know, great rewards. Everyone's really happy for the most part. And, you know, people are playing the game probably more than ever before, which is good, right? But we just want to make sure that I think as long-term stakeholders or investors in the game that you know we want to have a game that's around this time next year right so. yeah yeah totally it's um and i feel i personally feel um perfectly confident that they will um re restore order to that process like i feel i do i feel i feel 100 percent confident that they're gonna they're gonna come it might be two seasons away it might be two weeks away but i do think in the relatively near future they're going to come to this with some sort of solution that's going to drastically alter the availability of these relatively free reward cards for almost no investment because i because that's never been something they've 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 endorsed they've always strived to achieve um a system where you are being called like look at what they did with collection power the implementation of collection power itself is is a indication of their their desire to incentivize long-term growth of an account or you know the higher rewards at higher levels or you know now the better chest at higher levels these are they might not be working the way that they were intended but these are examples 
and there are many of of their desire to see people going deeper and deeper into ownership of the, of these assets and not more and more shallow across more and more accounts but that's that's what they want but what they're getting right now is more and more shallow investment at the lower levels because this is a dramatic opportunity um and so I, you know, I know they're going to see this and I, I feel confident they're going to change it. And so I'm going to clip this 15 minute part in particular or 10 minutes or whatever we talked about, because I really want people to hear that I don't think this is going to last forever. Um, and that's almost why I'm covering it so regularly right now, because I actually think anybody listening to this right now, uh, Eli, Dom, Alec, Days, um, yeah, Alec, uh, everybody that's here, like this is... This is very unique. It's never been like this before. And I don't, I'm not convinced it's going to be like this in the short term. Um, and may, even if it's two months, like it, that would be a really long time in my opinion, but strike while the iron is hot, take advantage of this opportunity. Um, if you probably, many of you are like me, you have more than one account, just move some of the assets around. And, and act, this, I started this in the middle of the sea. I started this three days ago. 75 loot chests there. I've gotten 20 chests every day on this on the daily without much effort. It gets exceedingly hard to get once you get like here I am at 25 on this account. It's really hard to keep going. Like as you can see, I need 28,000 uh, focus points, and I get about 10, 000, 8, five to 10,000 per win, depending on how many gold cards I've got, how many win streaks. So it gets harder and harder and harder. But at this level, earning bronze chests, I earned. 12 or 14 loot chest with one victory. And so this is so easy to get about 20 a day. And it's so easy to, you know, to, I guess, I think I probably am going to accumulate 150, which is, I believe the max. That's what I heard today. The max on season chest is 150. Um, I don't know if that's true though, but that's what I read. Guys, do you know, Either Tales or Jim, is it is it accurate to say that the, the season chest max at one one five zero? Yeah, it's max season at one fifty and max daily at thirty. Mm. So, it's not going to keep going, but it's it's an opportunity right now in front of us. Take advantage of it. But you know, and and what does that even cost? Ten dollars to create an account. You know, if we're going to buy a few cards, think about next season instead. If this is still around buy a $10 account if you don't already have an alt account and then equip it with 15,000 power and, or rent it for with the $3 that they're going to give you and then just replicate this because you're going to get in the neighborhood of 150 loot chests here and then you're going to get 20 a day the 20 a day times 15 is going to be 300 I think that's 400 is that 450 loot chests 15 days, the 30. 15 times... Or 50. 15 times 20, because you're not going to get 30 every day. I have 300. So that's 300. And 150. And then another 150, the guys. Like, this... And 33% yeah. of those is going to be cards, right? Like, you're going to get... Oops. You're going to get 150 cards. That's crazy. It's a good deal. For ten dollars, you're gonna get a hundred and fifty cards. Yeah, and this is why you know after sound and others are saying we are the new bots, right? Because we're we're doing this because these rewards are that great. But again, it's only gonna be a matter of time before we're muscled out and the real bots come back. Yeah. So. Hey Dwayne, uh, real quick, go back to that calculator. Yeah. Uh, then times that by five for the bare minimum collection power you can get. Yeah, man. So they're they're already getting, you know, after one season, they're what instantly out of bronze three. I think you're right. Is it here and then go here and then it's a thousand? I think now and then. So you're, you're in yeah oh, you're, no. in, you're in bronze two with seven hundred or sorry bronze one with seven hundred after one season of play, soaring and that's that's assuming you keep the cards. Oh, but... that's. That's the collection power. So bronze two will go down to 500. So you'll be in bronze two. You need 2,500 for bronze one. That's right. At, I, uh, when modern drops. That's right. I was looking at the rank points. You're right. So yeah. you would need, you'd be, you'd be slightly below bronze two with the 700 
Um, so after three seasons, you'll be in bronze one if this continues. But I mean, the there. Let's just pop over to the the post. I mean, there's a 33% chance of a reward card, and there's a very trivial chance of legendary or gold foil. But that doesn't that doesn't mean that you have a terrible chance of getting a yeah. rare or a epic. Yeah, epic. Yeah. Like I got, like I said today, this is a bronze. Well, that's not me, but um. At home. That's a my reward today. Was this, bron- was this all I, your stuff? Boom. There it is. Yeah, no. So that no. Oh yeah, because I retweeted it. That's right. That's an epic, and that's a this is a bronze level reward. So, I mean, it's a, and that's on one daily chest. And I I opened actually quickly. I want to look at what I got. This was. How to do this? I just don't care. Oh, I'm gonna. No. And then the clouds. I mean, as as a new player coming into Splinterlands, right? Business is good. You can't really probably pick a better time to come into the game right now, just because. Mm-hmm. As a new player, you're just getting so much for so little. So it's it's a great great time to be coming into the game right now, honestly. Mm-hmm. So can't complain about that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. On my twelve fifty eight six, I got let's see, claimed claimed <laughs> rewards. So that's the that's the one I just showed, I think. But then let's look at switch account seven. You know what? Maybe we should just go back and bring back the quest potions. Uh-huh. So we have a burn mechanic. That's the other thing, too. When they bring, because they're going to bring out, they said they both agreed. Aggie and Yava said they want to bring out. Um, ECR. Yeah, the ECR potions. potions. And so when the bots get a hold of, let's maybe spend 10 minutes talking about what that, or maybe not even, like whatever you guys think. If you want to comment on that, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I think they're going to bring out ECR potions. And I think. That's going to have, that's going to definitely, if that's done poorly, that's going to be a bot's wet dream. Don't you think? Mm. Well, I, I think in the game, as, as game mechanics go, anytime you can put sinks into the game that add, you know, let's say uh, perceived value for, for players, that's a good thing for the economy overall. It's just that it has to be balanced properly to do so. And I think they're already aware that, hey, you know, an ECR regen for someone like in Champion is, has a different value than someone in Bronze. So if it's implemented, you know, well, you know, I think it's definitely viable and something that should be looked at. Uh, again, because just from a pure mechanic, like if, if, for example, you start burning vouchers or fractions of vouchers, depending on the value of vouchers, you know, to do something like that, then yeah, it's probably a net positive for those not only that, you know, are maybe earning vouchers in other ways because the value of vouchers go up in that case, uh, but it could also be potentially valuable for those that are choosing to burn the vouchers or mm-hmm. sink the vouchers. So mm-hmm. from, from my perspective, I think it's definitely something that should be looked at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it, it like on the surface. Um, I just, it's, I can see it going wrong. So I just really hope they handle it well. One thing that I, I'd love to propose for no one's listening to me, but for, for your guys' feedback um, is I've been thinking about it. And I was like, look, if the ECR potions are just, you know, in a, trivially inexpensive, um, then that can just be another cost of business that bot, armors, bot armies pay to just just uh, continue the farming. And, and with these sorts of rewards, that would be really, really powerful. Now, that doesn't mean it's a bad idea to have them. It's just saying it's got to be done well. And one thing I was thinking is we're always talking about how we 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 the game is not designed to exclude bots, but we don't want bots to have a unique advantage over humans. And one of the ways that you could measure that or kind of you know, lean into that and support human players and discourage bots with ECR potions would be to recognize the fact that um the ecr the ecr burn ca- the the capture rate burns roughly 25 percent per 30 wins and you're going to gain 25 percent back per day and so on average that's about an hour and a half of play like to maybe an hour to two hours depending on how quick or flashed you are with it um and that's probably like pretty i think that's like for a human, that's probably a fair amount. So I almost think 
um, the, you, that's like the target. Think of that as the target, 30 games a day. But then there are days where you're not gonna play. So solution is on days where you don't play for a 24 hour period, and that's trackable by the data on the battles log, they could, the game could almost award you like, okay, you have one, um, I'm gonna use the word voucher, but I don't mean, voucher obviously has his own meeting for Splinterlands. Like you have one ticket and that can, you can bring that to the shop and you're allowed, you're allowed to buy one ECR potion. Now you still have to pay for the ECR potion. It's not like it's free just cause you missed a day, but it's like yeah. you are eligible for one ECR potion because you missed a day. And in that way, the game creates human opportunity to make up for real life into inconvenience and distraction. Um, I couldn't come in on Monday. I'd love to play on Tuesday, double as much. And that's all it would ever be. Maybe that's a way that bots would never really take advantage of it uh, because that doesn't lean into, they don't call in, call in sick. They don't have to go take their kid to the hospital or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree with that in principle, Dwayne. But I think one thing, if you look at the bot behavior is right now, the what the bots are doing similar to previous seasons is they rent for 24 hours and they burn their ECR to the ground during that 24 hours. Yeah. And then they wait two or three days to right. get it all, all over again. You're so right. in that particular scenario, every bot would be getting two or three tickets to just sp spam their ECR even more during that 24 hour rent. Oh, you're so, so right. You know, you have to be just a little careful of that. Yeah. So, and this is the thing, this is like, this is the thing about all of this. When we look at what Aggie and Yaba are doing, um, it really is so challenging. And so I've got a ton of grace and I'm not like, I am patient and I'm, ex I'm confident they're going to write the ship, but I see issues and I almost just want, I just, I want to, I want them to identify those same issues and find their own resolutions. I'm confident they'll find better resolutions than I. I could ever offer. Um, but I think ECR potions is, is a potential hurdle. Like it's, it's not necessarily easy to implement and there are tons of ways it could go wrong. And so I want them to be cautious and thoughtful about the impl the, uh, implications. What do you guys think about, uh, staked SPS kind of playing a role? in rewards or like ECR decay, um, but capped per league. So like, you know, bronze can't get more than like 10% increase. Gold can't get more than like 50%. And then like champion can go all the way up to like double or something on top of the stuff that they already have. Yes. Yeah, I think, again, similar with sinks, I think anytime you encourage SPS to be staked and provide value there or utility to doing so to the token, I think that from a game mechanic is usually something that would interest me as a game developer because, um, you know, anytime, again, you can add value to SPS or staking SPS seems, seems like a good thing to me. Um, Alex, And then it also makes it to where, because I assume more most likely that people in the higher leagues tend to have more state to sps than people who who are in the lower leagues yeah that's i think that's probably true yep um and with it being capped i think like then it also makes it to where you know someone in champion could just be like oh well if i'm just gonna get double uh chest i'm just gonna do this in bronze well then again it's capped so once you're in bronze you're only getting like 10 percent I kind of get the feeling like there's a unique excitement that's coming out of this bronze opportunity. And I, and in your video today tales where you're talking about the, the air, the card issuance rates. And you were like, you were speculating. Maybe they had too many and they recognize they had too many and they're like letting it, they're like, let's just let some of these, get printed out of existence so where people can get because people are getting sick of heat smith and rats and the launcher and pelican you know what i mean you said that right and and maybe that so maybe there's an there's a whole 40 chess thing happening with aggie and yava um and allowing what i'm declaring as a problem occur because they one they are okay with these old reward cards being printed to out of existence two they're happy to see all this excitement and there is excitement for sure there is, uh, because 
I, you know, just look at my, like my views. Like I, I've seen a thousand is like common again. Um, subscribers are up. Um, I had like a tooth look this, this one rank reward problems. It had 229 comments on it and I haven't ever had a video with that many comments. And you know, if we went and looked at them, most of them are like, yeah, this new rank reward is amazing. But some of them, you know, probably 10% were Dwayne, you know, you, you just need to restructure how you play and you'll be happy with everything. Like I said earlier, probably coming from a place of like, you know, don't rock the boat. <laughs> you know, we, we love what we, we've got. Don't shut up Dwayne kind of thing. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think with, with this rank reward system, I mean, there's definitely generated interest and conversation and it's it's somewhat polarizing i think depending on where you sit in the game and your specific situation so from that perspective yeah it's absolutely generating views it's generating conversation um you know you just go on twitter and you search for hashtag and you just see tons of reward chests all over the place you know people documenting what they're getting and you either love it or it's kind of like, hey, I hate it. You know, look what I got. This is garbage. So, you know, it's it's definitely generating uh, eyes and ears on the project. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I think it's both. I think it's. I don't know that that's really what's happening. Like I'm not, but I'm curious thinking, having watched that video before we went live here. I'm curious if that is if that's a factor about what's happening because it does feel like this is a unique um a unique and significant change from what we had and it, it is not without like it has obvious concerns and yet in the last town hall even then they, they were obvious, like uh, the people were commenting, saying things, and it was, it was evident to a large group of people, but he, Matt was like, sounded frustrated. And he's like, you know, it's only been a few days, just everybody calm down. And, and I, I, I almost, I just makes me think he, like, they're too smart to not see what we're seeing here. And so I just, I, I do kind of wonder if maybe it's just like a little bit of what you said. And they just they're happy to see some of these disappear off the marketplace off the uh, print rates and then ultimately to open the door for some new exciting new cards and all the um eagerness that that prompts like you know when these new cards came out jim remember when we were talking about which ones were the best and ranking yeah. the top four and so the, the, that was exciting for you and me even let alone the mm -hmm. audience let alone the community right yeah, I mean, if you look at an analogy, for example, like if I'm, you know, a store like, I don't know, The Gap, and I have a bunch of ugly plaid shirts from last season that are never going to sell, and uh, I can give them out at all my stores right now, and people are going to come in and scoop them up and love them. And then, you know, next month, for example, I'm opening a whole bunch of new, um, you know, outlet stores or specialty stores. And it's this great press. It's bringing new people to the stores. Yeah, it's it's a great, great strategic thing to do because you're getting rid of something that you want or need to get rid of, and you're bringing new customers in at a perfect time for you to achieve growth. So from that perspective, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And that's why I mentioned it in my video because not only is kind of the evidence there that we're seeing in real time kind of alluding to that, but the timing is, you know, quite perfect. So... Dude, did you see that, guys? I, my, um, oh yeah, yeah, and I was gonna trample right through them all, but now I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I think we lose just that one miss. Um, did that you got really lucky with that demon shark going crazy. <laughs> oh, I think we're good actually. The retaliates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right, I did. Uh, but we're gonna win anyways. Nice. Um, okay, mm. well we've gone over an hour. Let's let's check in with the chat and see if there's anything that they want to talk about before we wrap up. But I think we might have got it. Um, I did see a funny comment. Uh, let's see. Uh, Days was talking. To... Oh man, Days. Okay, it's okay right now. Jesus doesn't like me either. And then Alec is preaching over to him. Uh, Days, Jesus loves you with the smileys. And then um, uh, Alec making the funny comment about because I said nobody's listening to me. Um, and then simultaneously, I'm making money off YouTube subscribers. Yeah, I mean, it's true, dude, but like you guys understand what this game is. I mean, you know, 
if I was to if I was to send a, uh, a DM to Matt and be like, listen, dude, you're, you don't get it. Like, this is a problem. I, I wouldn't. There's no way I'd get a response on that. And uh, Aggie, Aggie's really um, connected. I've actually, to be fair, I've never, ever reached out to Matt. Maybe he's super personable. I hope I don't sound like a, Matt's a jerk. I don't know Matt. Um, I just I just don't really believe I, my my voice has any sway over what they what they're going to do is my point. And um but I do yet also think I've got kind of a unique um, understanding and, and I'm hearing some of the same things being echoed by Tails and by Bulldog and by, you know, uh, Aftersound and by Jim and, you know, and so on. And so the community is speaking up, but I'm not necessarily hearing an acknowledgement from Matt and, and Aggie at this moment. And, and, and so I'm super interested to see what the next town hall brings, because I think if these things aren't being discussed at that moment, if they're being kind of brought left and pushed under the table at that moment, that would be concerning to me in the sense of like, what would it take for these issues to be recognized as issues? Even if it's, if they come out and they said something like, okay, we're printing too many cards or bronze probably needs some changes, but we're not yet sure how we're going to do that. That would be fine by me. But if they come out and say like, no, everything's good. I'm going to be very surprised by that. And, and that'll be okay with me because I'll continue to do what I'm doing with bronze. But I just, in a, in a matter of days or weeks, I f fully suspect the bot army is going to return and we're going to see dashboard as Tails was pointing out the accounts the daily average active accounts is around to yesterday or today was 160,000 and as you can see that's hugely down from like the last season 360 340 that's the bots are gone and when they come back and take advantage of 400 free loot chests every season at bronze that's going to do things to this economy that are not positive. And so I want that to be stated by the Splinterlands team, even if the answer is, but we don't yet know what we want to do about it. What do you yeah, I think? That's a, I think that's a really good point, Wayne. And I've mentioned in my video as well is that, you know, what we're seeing right now, the benefits that you and I are receiving right now by farming these bronze and silver accounts at the rental prices that we're getting is really because the 200,000 bots are not here right now. And you're seeing it, all those rewards that they were extracting, that small group of bot farm owners were, were getting, are going to now you and, and myself and others. And, you know, if you look at some of those accounts, like I've done in my previous video from earlier this week, we went and saw some of those sale accounts. There's literally 45,000 Chaos Legion reward cards on just a couple of those accounts. And that's the magnitude of what we're dealing with here. And we're seeing some of those rewards come to us now, which is nice, mm. but it's not always going to be that way moving forward necessarily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, I need to retaliate. Oh, yeah, tie. that was a huge tie. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, definitely in conclusion, I want to say it for like the third time. I am confident with what's happening here. If I wasn't, I would be, uh, crystal clear with my audience and telling you guys what I'm doing. Um, I am more bullish now than I have ever been about Splinterlands because I think this reward, the, the positive implicate, those are all some of the, we spent like an hour talking about kind of concerns, but like there are tons of positive implications. We are going to attract a ton of new players because these rewards are going to be juicy at the end of the season. That's going to be prompt. That's That's already prompting Twitter posts and YouTube videos, and it's attracting new viewership and, and new player base, I think. Maybe they haven't dove in yet, but I think they're going to be coming. And then um, when the bot armies return, they're going to ha they're going to have a, a desperate need for rentals. That's going to drive up rental cards. Rental card prices are going to then drive up um, value the the price of buying cards, and uh, because the rental returns on them are so much greater. And I think that's going to be another um, tailwind that encourages whoa what's going on here with splinterlands the, the there's earning opportunity here because there'll be this perceived price appreciation with the assets 
And then in the not too distant future, we're going to see Rift Watchers. I, I think we're going to see the burning of all of those reward cards. That, that's going to prompt new reward cards. Lands like suddenly going to feel like it's getting soon because the, these weeks, these days and weeks are going to blend into months. And it's going to be, there's just, there's so many good things, exciting things that are happening. This is awesome, but there's some unique hurdles in front of us and we just need to recognize that. That's all. Yeah, and I think we it's it's been kind of a, a little bit of a crazy miracle. We haven't even mentioned the word node once in the stream, and we've been streaming for <laughs> over an hour. And how how great are nodes, and what is the opportunity there? And we're not even talking about it because we're talking about rewards right now. And and to your point, this is how crazy the game is right now. And you know, for me, I, I just will say I'm I'm super bullish on nodes, and I think it's a great you know um, piece of the game that you know people aren't really necessarily noticing, but. You know, we're not even mentioning it because this is how crazy the ranked reward system is right now. Yeah, true. Yeah, the nodes. You're right. You're totally right. It's it's awesome, man. It's a it's an exciting, exciting thing, and um, I can't wait to see. Uh, I'm gonna. I can't wait to see that that when are the the rewards are gonna start soon too. Like the voucher is gonna be giving away for node ownership. Um, in the, the vouchers have already started. Has it? Okay, there you go. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, today's the third three day three now. days ago eight vouchers a day boys and girls yep and i sold one of my cards i sold a um good show let's just let's switch to a like last minute remarks a few things that are just going to come up um any and i'll give you guys time too if there's anything that you want to um you know comment on or or discuss but um i sold, sold your kitty no i didn't i listed it though i did list it <laughs> but it hasn't sold um, but I sold this guy here uh, for 800, and that's just nice. gonna that's going to the Vegas fund. So I'll be oh. I'll be there Vegas 2022 Splinter Splinter Fest 2022 guys. Hope you're gonna come too. Oh yeah. Tails, are you going? Yep. Uh, my wife just doesn't know yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I've, I listed my cards um, for sale. I listed three cards for sale. That's uh, for rent. Oh, for, for sale. I listed three cards and Lightning Dragon, which I love, man. But I have a level three. And so I, I'd be willing to let go of the level four. And then so, and then the Byzantine Kitty. And yesterday, at least, this was like the, the best price available on the market for like for this many BCX. But of course, I'm appealing to a small audience. We'll see if it sells. If it did, though, I'd be, I'd be maybe taking first class to Vegas. We'll see. <laughs> He's putting it all in on, on the roulette table. 4K on black. Oh, man. No, thanks. I, last time I went to Vegas, I, I, gambled, I was playing poker. At, and I use, um, I'm definitely the guy who like stays there for a long time waiting for the right hand. And yeah. it didn't work out uh, when that hand came. I remember probably 400, 500 US dollars just out the, out the window. And mm -hmm. I mean, I like, I still like poker, but in these days it's more like, you know, let's play a game for 10 or 20 bucks each and, and just have yeah. a little fun with the buddies. That's one thing I have noticed. It's like, if you're playing poker and you're just always waiting for the good hand, people notice that. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this guy's got a good hand. <laughs> um, Jim, what's going on with you? Do you want to? Uh, do you want any last comments on whatever's going on? Hmm. Uh, well, recently I uh, moved out. Nice. and uh, But I, I do have a new place I'm going to now. Cool. Uh, still relatively close. And I'll be moving in. We're doing a lot of moving stuff tomorrow. But for sure, Sunday, I'll be, I'll be moved in there. Cool. So, yeah. And then Tuesday, I'll be live sharing for Splinterlands. And everyone will see the new setup. Nice. Tails, anything what, anything new with you? Do you want to talk about one of the recent videos or any any comments you want to drop before we go? No, I think we're good. I think we covered a lot of ground today, and I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, man, it's uh, always a joy to you know uh, share these conversations with both you guys. I really enjoy uh, and and the the community here, guys. Eli, Days, Dom, Alec. Um, I think we have somebody earlier too. Oh, I think it was just Jim. Guys, it's great to see you popping out and just. You know, adding to the conversation, because the, the, as I've said before on my channel, it's so cool that this is a community of people that are 
interested in this topic because I mean, my, my close friends, my family, no one, no one is interested. Like they, they'll be patient with me to a certain degree, but it's not their thing. They don't really care. And then I step into this world and we have these hour and a half conversations and it goes by in a blink because we're all passionate about it. And we're eager to think through like, what would this mean? And what's the opportunity in front of me and how can I you know, maximally benefit from this opportunity? And so I love it. I appreciate you all. Uh, Tails, thanks for coming. Jim, thanks for coming. And guys, we will be live, or at least I'm not sure. I haven't asked Jim yet, but I'll be on tomorrow night on Splinterlands TV. Um, and I'm also thinking about maybe taking on a new time slot with Splinterlands TV. So we'll see as a, as addition, an addition. So I don't know. And nothing's for sure. Uh, I have to talk it over, think it over, see if I can fit it into the schedule. But that might be something coming down the pipe, guys. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Have an amazing day. God bless.